Hey, everybody. Welcome to another week of Ryan and Rodrigo. And this week, we're really lucky to be with my wonderful sister-in-law, Lucy, who is coming to us all the way from San Jose. And she's going to be talking to us all about her job and what she loves doing, which is sending big old rockets up into space. And so thanks for coming to us, Lucy. How are you doing today? How are you doing today? Uh, hi, guys. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be a guest on your show. And I'm doing pretty good. Cool. So are you ready to, to answer some tough questions all about space and rockets? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> cool. Well, I guess it's not it's not so hard, right? It's not like it's rocket science. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. So, uh, Ryan, just before we begin, um, I would like to ask you about this expression. It's not right. It's not rocket science after all. Um, when do you guys use that? Uh, well, you know, it's it's an expression that's like rocket science um, is is something that's really hard and difficult, and like ninety nine percent of people have no idea about it. And so if you say that ah, something, this isn't rocket science, you mean that it's not so difficult. It's actually pretty easy or don't, don't be so afraid of this. It's not rocket science. Um, okay, so it's, like it's uh, I think, I guess it's the equivalent in, in, in English for the Portuguese expression like mamon com açúcar, something like that, papaya and sugar. Uh, <laughs> we have a, a similar expression, but that's more regional. <laughs> is that a is that a Sao Paulo expression? Because I've never heard it, not once. That, that's an old folk expression. Older people use it. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, um, anyway, today we're actually lucky to have a real rocket scientist here, oh. um, and so for all of you people who have ever wondered what a real rocket scientist looks like. That's what Lucy does. Um, and so, Lucy, can you tell us just a little bit about what you do? What what does a rocket scientist do? Uh, uh, just one, one moment. Lucy, why are you not wearing your astronaut suit and your, yeah. like, I'm, why are you? Because I'm not an astronaut. I'm just a scientist. So I'm the lab uh, guy. Actually, I'm the lab girl, right? So you can find me at the lab. And the astronauts can go to the on the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, si since I, I moved to this city to San Jose, I found out that Brazil has a space center, a research né, space center that we are actually that I and a lot of people don't know about. Né? So I, I joined the team, the technical team of this uh, research institute. And we, uh, the, the goal of our institute is to develop uh, vehicles, uh, launching, uh, satellite launching launcher vehicles and some smaller vehicles, uh, smaller rockets, né? As, as you can say, to do some experiments on microgravity. So that's uh, the goal of our research institute. Okay. Um, what what do you do about that? What is your role in all of this? Well, actually, I cannot tell you not as anything about that because it's uh, since. Yeah, since our, our research is inside the Air Force, inside the, our army, so it's a, it's a really sensitive, sensitive matter. So I cannot tell you about anything, absolutely anything about what I do. I can tell you what, my, what the Institute does, what the, the project that we are that we are developing right now because it's on the website, right? Okay. But my actually uh, my activities or what I actually do, unfortunately, I can't tell you anything about it. 
Can, Sorry. But can you Sorry. can you tell us yeah. like what part of it you work on? Like there's a rocket that's going it, to space. So like yeah. part of it is made of of materials and another part of it explodes and another part of it has a set like what part of it do you do work on that's more what i'm curious about is okay so i uh i'm on the team that uh let me let me try to find the the right words for it so i'm on the team that makes the the ignites the rocket and can and destroy the rocket. Ah. So, yeah, so that that's the team I'm on. Okay. That's cool. That's very cool. Yes, it is. So you get to spend time finding ways to make things explode. Yes, uh it's not actually it's not our uh let me let me find the right word again. Uh, we don't want to explode the rocket, <laughs> right? That's the last resource. Uh, that's the that is something that we have to do if something goes wrong. Uh, actually, we we wanted to fly as good as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's my job. My job is trying to make this thing ignite as good as possible. Mm. Nice. Um, and what? Did you study at university to be able to do this? Uh, I'm graduate in chemical engineer. And afterwards, I, I had a master degree in, in uh, space technologies. Yeah. But, the, but my actually job is with chemistry. I'm a technician and an engineer in chemistry. A chemical engineer. Yeah. Like just like uh, water and white, yeah, yeah, something like that. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought about starting up a side hustle like Walter White? Actually, after I I watched the the, the show, yes, actually I did. It's a it's an easy way to make money. Good is money. It, is it just as I mean you would be the expert, so is it just as easy as the show shows how <laughs> how to make uh these drugs? Well actually uh, it's easy if if you study chemistry, you can visualize that and you can make you can uh and you can and you can make that. No, but it's not as simple as on the show. Uh, okay. Now the the con the controls are not that simple. Pressure and temperature, uh, that's always something that can go really really bad. So just making a bunch of mess out of a out of a trailer is probably not so possible. Or no. uh, it's not that possible. It's not that possible. You can you can make uh, some some nice drugs in the middle of the jungle, right? You can refine some drugs in the jungle with some uh, gasoline and stuff, but uh, just like they show on Breaking Bad, it's a little more complicated than that. It's possible, but it's a little more complicated. So what I understand is that you cannot tell us about what you do, but you can tell us your knowledge about drugs. That's... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you have to put this uh, this podcast on the deep web. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, right. Well, since we can't talk about the rockets, can you give us a class about how to make drugs? Just uh, create a PowerPoint <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> sure, let's settle. Let's settle. Okay, uh, maybe next Sunday is good for you? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do a... Re I can ma I'll make my research. And we'll finally have an episode that we can put behind a paywall. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sure. <laughs> um, so, what made you get interested in 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 this topic? Like, it took a, how many years to study chemistry and engineering at university? Well, uh, my course was uh, was about six years. Uh -huh. It's a six years graduate, 
And actually, my interest for chemistry came in my eighth grade. Uh, on my eighth grade, I had a teacher and I was in public school and public schools, as Rodrigo knows here in Brazil, yeah, doesn't have, actually has zero resources for science. Yeah. We, we only walk into the lab just to, to see a bunch of closed, uh, closed closets and some labs had some uh, biology stuff like a skeleton and something like that. And I had a teacher in the eighth grade that just opened the lab for us and teach us how to do soap. It's something so easy to do, you can do at home and help and uh, teach us how to do some glue. And I, I was just fascinated by that. So since I was 14, I just knew that I wanted to study chemistry. I don't know why I, I have to study that. And then I saw the the academic part of it the theory and the atoms and electrons and stuff like that and i just fell in love with it so i did a, a technician course a chemistry technician and then i just wanted to be an engineer oh no i need i have to keep going on this path so i came to another town to study chemical engineering Okay, uh, Lucy, uh, I've known you for a long time and you're famous for being such a nice person. Thank but now you. Now you reached an, uh, a whole new level because you fell in love with chemistry. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> else falls in love with chemistry. Oh, come on. It's <laughs> so cute. The, the, uh, the neutrons and the protons and electrons are so cute. Come cute. on. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Why are you using that word? Because yes. they are cute. I, uh, it's my next yeah. tattoo. I will tattoo an atom. An atom. <laughs> they can be interesting or or special or fascinating or useful. But I would uh, never use the word cute to describe. Really? <laughs> oh yes, they are cute. Come on. Do you imagine them like holding hands together to like? Of course. Uh -huh. They are all holding hands, and there's a lot of space between them, but they are all holding hands. That's that's how your computer is made. That's how your table is made. That's how you are made. Mm -hmm. A bunch and of they, atoms yeah. holding hands. That sounds like the most when, hippie bullshit I've ever heard. <laughs> and when you picture them, are they wearing masks? That's important. Uh, are they wearing? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. Are they, are they wearing masks? Oh yes, of course. They they are not on the anti max uh, protests yet. Yet. Okay, right. So they're good atoms. Yeah, nice. they're good atoms. They they would they um. I forgot. I forgot the word. But the they live in society. They are good for the society. They do their job. All right, uh, Ryan, I have a question. Actually, I have tons of questions, uh, but I don't even know the questions I have because Ryan, Ryan, he is, how can I say, Ryan is smart and intelligent and he reads about stuff like this. I, I don't usually. Uh, I learn mostly about English and music. So I know nothing about, I had no idea that Brazil had a um, research institute about that. I had no idea uh, that Brazil launched satellites. Uh, I had no idea, of it, and I still have no idea of what uh, all that is. Um, so why, why do you think nobody knows um, about this why do you think the population like nobody if you if i ask people i'm sure that nobody will know about this why do you think that is yeah it, it's uh, for <clears throat> i'm sorry uh, for us uh, it's really sad to see this picture that the population doesn't know that we have such program and when they f uh, and when they wear they are aware about it they just think why is Brazil spending money on that? Mm -hmm. So we, uh, uh, that's so unfair because the, uh, this market, the space market for experiments and for satellite launchers, it's from, everybody needs it, a satellite up in the sky. 
in um, open space, uh, rather than sky in space. Uh, or else we wouldn't have internet, we can't have uh, phones, we can't have TV. So every single country in this planet needs a satellite. And only 11 countries in this planet has the technology to do so. So it's a huge and really profit market. And Brazil is trying to get on this market since, since the 70s, actually. In the 70s, they, we start to develop uh, 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 small rockets. Uh, so they would get a bigger and bigger. And then we had, um, unfortunately, it's a project that it's, it's already finished. We had the VLS-1. It's a satellite launcher vehicle uh, that didn't work out. It's on the website, so I can say, I can talk about it. Now we are having, we are developing another launcher another uh, satellite launcher and we are trying to get on this market to to uh, put brazil on a very a very uh, a very Good position. specific group yes very, very position so uh, when people say oh, brazil shouldn't spend money with this uh, actually the the money that we would that we would gain to get on this market would be so good for the country and the technology right we need this we need this technology like uh, 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 what a, I can't find the right words again but it's uh, really important for us it's strategic for the country right mm -hmm. so uh, we are we are trying today to change this picture to to, uh, I don't know the right word, to uh, divulgação, to help me, Rodrigo. Um, advertise, to market. Yeah, yeah, ex ex exactly. We're trying to ever advertise the market about it. So I'll just uh, let you guys, uh, 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 actually, I let an invitation for you to, to, get, uh, to get in touch with the with the uh, oh my god to get in touch with the the people on the institute so we could do a podcast about it it would be really interesting to to spread the news around and make people see that we we have a we have a space research center in brazil it's mm -hmm. really it's really important for people to know that i think like most people if you ask them about uh, a Brazilian space agency, or even if you ask them about the American one, NASA, they would immediately think of, oh, you mean like sending people to Mars or or sending oh, people yeah. to the moon? And that's all that they would imagine about space research. But yeah. like the more practical, the more useful aspects of it are like, um, like you said, we have to send satellites into space. Yes. And and now I was reading um, the 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 near future is tiny little <laughs> tiny satellites. Yes. And that um, every company and even private citizens are going to have the opportunity to have their own little private satellite in space soon. Yeah. That will do. Whatever you can imagine a satellite can do. It can transmit information for you. It can track you. It can find your phone if you get lost. It can find you if you get kidnapped or whatever. And so that's the that's what Brazil is trying to do, I think, is they and, want to be a, a market something. for these tiny satellites. Yes, exactly. Something, that's it. I'm sorry. Uh, something that I always hear about uh, as a layman, as, something, as someone that doesn't really know much or anything about it is that when for example when you when you are researching or when NASA was researching to launch a rocket I don't know for something bigger in the in the process they created many important things that we use on our in our everyday life for example I think velcro was created uh, in a space research uh, but many other things uh, so that's important for, uh, like, for so many reasons, right? Right? 
Yes, yes, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah, the, we on the pro on this process of developing spacecrafts, we uh, we need materials and we need we need a lot of uh, of stuff that we can use here on the on our daily basis. So we, it's uh, it's uh, really important and it's important for Brazil because Brazil it's not uh, an industrial country. Brazil is not an industrial country. So we need to create Brazilian industry. So it, uh, when you have research research centers like that with that goal with that objective, so you create a lot of you can foment a lot of industries on the aerospace area, right? And not just uh, we can say aerospace because the, the aeronautics use the same materials. So we can use the same materials for uh, civilian aviation, right? So that's what people doesn't, uh, who doesn't, uh, the people that uh, doesn't care or doesn't know a lot about science, they don't understand that, how the importance of the science of research. And Lucy, uh, Ryan, and I worked together for a long time. And Ryan, I imagine um, what it is to, what it is, uh, how hard it is for Ryan to have a rocket scientist in a family, uh, <laughs> or maybe how hard it is for you to have Ryan in a family. Because Ryan, sometimes he would call me and ask me about science fiction. <laughs> and I was like, I, I don't know, Ryan. I, I'm not the right person. <laughs> uh, but Ryan really loves that. He really loves science fiction and science in general. Yeah. Uh, does he ask you weird questions too? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he, no, he doesn't ask me weird questions. He shows me the weird, the weird stuff. That's yeah. the inter oh. the interesting <laughs> thing. <laughs> Right. He's a lot more more scientific, more fictional than I am. So he doesn't ask me. He show me the things. <laughs> He's my teacher. He's my my science fiction teacher. And and it's hard with Lucy because she's such a scientist that <laughs> sometimes I'll show her something and she'll be like, "Yeah, but mm. that's that's not real. That's yeah. not possible." <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so Ryan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get the same answer that you got from me, but from someone that knows about it. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to say, I used to tell him the same, but he would, and, but I, I, I didn't know. I was, it was just my feeling. I said, Ryan, is that, I, that's not possible. But you can explain to him how, how that, how, uh, how impossible how that goes, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it. That's uh, that's my job to, to throw Ryan up a, uh, a good bucket of uh, of cold water. Yeah. Nice. That's an expression here, right, Rodrigo? Yeah. yeah throw a bucket yes. of cold water. <laughs> and it's not a challenge like in TikTok, Ryan. Like the... no, it's not a challenge. No. <laughs> the cold water challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, you were saying a few minutes ago about this uh, this launch that didn't work out very well. Um, yes. Was was that the launch I remember from a few years ago in the north of Brazil? Hmm. Oh no, no. Uh, the the this one that I that I mentioned it was the the accident that we had in our launch in our with our launcher in two thousand and three that okay. our launcher just ignited on the platform and unfortunate, unfortunately we lost uh, 20, 21, 21 mm -hmm. uh, companions on, oh. that, on that day. And, and since that day, a year before that, I, was, I just joined the team to keep going after this, this huge loss to, to keep going because Brazil needed it needed to show these people that lost their lives in there uh, we need to show that we that we can do it and we will do it and and what about this launch that i'm remembering can you tell uh -huh. us anything about that one that you oh, were more I, a part of that you participated in 
Yes, yes, I participated uh, of a campaign, of a launcher campaign. It was a, uh, it was a, a smaller rocket. That was not a satellite launcher. It was a smaller rocket. It, it would go to the suborbital, uh, suborbital uh, distance and goes back. And that unfortunately didn't work out. Well, we had some problems and it didn't take off. Mm. It just stays on the launcher. But I remember when when you went that the area that you went to, there was mm. something really unique about this space. Where where was it exactly? I don't remember. Oh, now that uh, I know that everyone is talking about it's uh, it's Alcântara. It's a city in Maranhão that is right in the middle of the planet. Right, we are almost there in the. Uh, is on the equator. Right? Yeah, it's on the equator. Yeah, exactly. So that's a really strategic place to launch vehicles because uh -huh. if you wanted to, uh, they can get higher with uh, with a little more, uh, a little less uh, fuel, right? So uh, you can save thirty percent of fuel if you launch something mm -hmm. here from Alcantara, and uh, everyone knows right now that our uh, our current government they just made a deal, a contract with the United States so they can use the, our, launch, uh, our launch base to send some American rockets there. And now we are creating the Alcantara Space Center. We had a, actually was a, a launch center for the Air Force, for the our rockets, the national rockets. And now we are creating the Alcantara Space Center. So any country that, uh, that of course, that has the authorization of the US government, any country that wants to launch something here in Alcantara, they will be able to do it. You can rent the center and launch your vehicle here. Do you know if, if like the United States or somebody is going to help develop this space center for Brazil? And so will Brazil end up with some some nice infrastructure because of this situation? Mm. Oh, actually, the, yeah, the US will not, they will help us, but not on, on that, uh, not on that matter. The, the contract that we made is uh, the Brazil comes with the infrastructure and the United States comes with the the rental, uh, as you can say, right? The rental. So, so actually, Brazil has a lot of work to do to make that place a space center because it's not. It's really simple. Uh, everything we do here is, is really simple, but it works. It works really fine. So we need to we need to put a lot of effort to build the space center so the America can come and and launch uh, their vehicles. Um, and like, in, if you just compare to like the American space centers mm -hmm. in Florida and there's one in Texas and one in California, yeah, they're like near-ish to urban areas. But like, if you look at this place on a map, it's in the middle of, of nothing, right? Yeah. Yes. For yeah. of forever, the middle of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Actually, oh, there's okay. a, actually there's an island real really near Alcântara that has a lot of people. <laughs> it's the capital of the state. Yeah, it's okay. San Luis, San Luis do Maranhão, and that's a problem. Actually, yeah, that's, it's uh, too that's close. a problem. Yeah, it's too close. Oh. So the 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 uh, it's not security. The safety that matters. That that it has to be. That has to be considered because of the of the proximity of this island and the population of the island. It's it's really it's a critical point in the long term. And what else is there around there? Just you got to travel a little bit around. I remember you saying it was like a beautiful place, right? Oh yes, actually we are real close of the Lançóis Maranhenses. Lençóis Maranhenses is a, is a touristic point here in Brazil that had a huge, huge uh, dunes with white sand. And, and in the, 
uh, in the rain time, it gets a lot of uh, legumes in the middle of the sand. So you have a lot, uh, and it's in the middle of the continent, right? So you you go there, you go up this huge dunes with white sand and and you see those lagoons with uh, green or blue water. It's a it's a wonderful place to meet. So it's like in the middle of a, of a desert, but then there's yeah. like a beach because yeah. there's a little pond. Yeah, something like that. And there, it, there's not just one, there's a lot of lagoons over there a lot like uh when you when you're on dry in the dry time you have just two legumes over there and it's real it's really far you you get to go to two or three dunes you have to go up and down so you can go to this to these little lakes but in the rain time you you just go up on the first one and you can choose which one you go. You can go to the blue one, to the green one. Uh, it's, a, it's a really beautiful place. Ryan, um, doesn't that sound like a, um, um, how can I say, like America created, it, this is unrelated, but just America created Las Vegas in the middle of the desert, right? Somebody, some people. Doesn't that sound like a waste of a place <laughs> that is like a desert with water? <laughs> beautiful <laughs> and not to not to build Las, uh, something like Las Vegas not to ruin the, the, the na natural beauty of the place no but to, to be uh, better explored right yeah maybe I don't know it seems it makes more sense if we put a space center where Las Vegas is because there's yes. there's <laughs> nothing there I, I drove through Las Vegas once and believe me uh -huh. for like 16 hours of driving <laughs> there's nothing you go from oh. reno to vegas and it takes a day to make this trip and there's absolutely <laughs> nothing on this on this this road and then <laughs> after you leave vegas to get to the next city is another eight hours and there's nothing so vegas <laughs> is just eight hours from anything yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> there so. is no reason for it to be there at all <laughs> Okay, so then, um, Lucy, um, I remember that a few years ago, you also got to travel to Paris for like a, a class or a training or, or something having to do with your work. Um, why, why did you have to go all the way to Paris? Like, can't they teach you about rockets here in Brazil? What, what was the deal with that? Oh, the uh, unfortunately, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't Paris for a travel. I wasn't traveling, so I could meet. I could go to the Eiffel Tower. I was there for a training, because uh, since Brazil does not have the uh, uh, what I can say, the academic, uh, the the knowing of the the rocket science, right? So I was there to. Uh, I was there for a training on my about rocket science, right? Mm -hmm. The the French they have uh, they are one of the eleven country that has that have uh, uh, launcher vehicles, and they have really good trainings there about specific specific parts of the the the, the rocket the rocket science itself. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a week. Uh, to do a training about the tonic. Look, it's a it's a really it's a really cool name, right? The tonic, and it was it was really interesting. I could uh, just to 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 listen to to engineers of the of the real thing over that of another country. Uh, it's it, it was really exciting. It was really exciting. Was almost like to uh, to know the SpaceX team, and the SpaceX team uh, came here to visit our institute. Yeah. They were here last year. The space uh, some people of SpaceX. So it was really exciting to to have a training with real specialists on the on the matter. Nice. Did you get to meet Elon Musk? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> he wouldn't come to Brazil. Okay. Maybe oh. to the Lensais Maranhenses, but not to EIA. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, and when you were doing the training, was it just like some Brazilian people went to to a class in Paris, or did people from all over the world go to like a international thing? It's an uh, it's an international thing. Oh, so okay. we had there we had uh, people for, from uh, England. We had us from Brazil. Uh, I think we had some Indians also because India has a a, a really good uh, a really good space program. Uh, I, I really don't remember if we had Indians, but we have Germans, and we had and there was a lot of French over there as also. It was a, it's an international it's an international school. It's called Eurosci. Mm. You can say Eurosci Advanced Training. They had they are. Uh, uh, they are a school, a, re, uh, a school for aerospace area, such aeronautics as uh, space. Mm -hmm. Was the was the course in French? Yes, the course was in French. I had to study French like crazy for six months, so I could understand what they were saying. So I studied for four days a week. Uh, for six months, so I could go to have this training. Do you do you remember any of your French still, or did you throw it out the moment that you got home? Uh, <laughs> not at the moment that I got home, but uh, uh, I was losing the French in, uh, uh, since that it was in 2014. So I was losing some of the French over these years. So I can say... Uh, je ne parle France, uh, français très bien, très bien. Mm. Je ne parle français très bien. That's the the <laughs> yeah. That's all you can get. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you you did have some time to like be a tourist when you were in Paris, though, right? Yes, I did. What was your favorite thing? Your most memorable thing that you did while you were just visiting? there uh it's uh, uh it's so cliche to say it but i'm sorry it's the truth it's the the damn I've, uh, eiffel tower <laughs> the eiffel tower is the most cliche thing you can say about paris oh my god it's the most beautiful yes it is it's impressive as you you come out of the 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 subway station and you just get this a splendid tower, all lighted up with a, a, an orange light in the right in front of you. And as you come getting closer, the, the tower, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's, it's, it's really, really beautiful. Everyone should have the opportunity. Every citizen in the world should have the opportunity to go there to see the Eiffel Tower. It's a really, it's the, what, uh, it's what I remember the most about Paris is the Eiffel Tower. Um, and one other thing about Paris is that uh, French people, especially Parisians, have this like reputation for being uh, not the most welcoming people to foreigners. French. Yeah. Did you think that was true? Not for me. Okay. And I wasn't speaking French with them. I was speaking English with them because I could understand French uh, really good, but uh, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, speak a lot of French like I speak in English. So I was speaking English and they were all really polite with me. I had absolutely no problems with the, the French uh, when I was there. Uh, it, it makes me really sad when people, uh, it happens with a couple, the friend of, of mine and my husband, they were in Paris and they were mistreated in every single place they walked in. Yeah, and I, I just remember, oh, I, I, uh, it's not possible. It's not, I was there for a week. I walked for almost Paris, uh, uh, entire Paris. Uh, I visit a lot of places, and 
uh, I was treated with respect uh, at all times. I I remember uh, Ryan since you mentioned that the fame of the French. I remember watching a Ron Atkinson uh, comedy sketch, Mr. Bean, uh, when he receives he he plays uh, the devil receiving people coming when after they die coming to hell and so he's received he's checking he, he has a checklist and oh murderers you come here to this line oh rapists you come here nazi you come here hitler you come here oh the french please you come here so <laughs> yeah. english english people really don't like uh, french uh, i suppose no, no. <laughs> <laughs> they had a war that lasted a, a hundred years yes. come on so exactly. yeah, I can understand that <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, but um, when when you were there you said that you, you could understand French but you spoke English mm -hmm. mostly yes. to people yes. yeah um, and your your English is very good, actually. I can say for having this conversation that thank and you, knowing thank you, you very much for all of these years. Um, did you did you learn English like by studying a lot and going to school and doing classes? Not actually. I learned English when I was just a, a little teenager, <laughs> on the, my early teen days, and. I, I think it comes from mom and dad. Mom and dad uh, love music, and we uh, we always had music in our home, and so maybe that's why the English language it's so uh, it's so good and amusing for me, for me and my sister. And so my sister and I we started to learn English by ourselves. Uh, my dad bought us a dictionary of English Portuguese. And we started to get the lyrics of the songs that we, we liked, that we enjoyed, and started to translate to Portuguese. And uh, it's really funny because I still have some of these tr uh, translators here. And since we didn't know uh, English, right, we just translated word by word. So it's, uh, it's really funny. You, you, can, you laugh a lot when you read, <laughs> when you read out our translations. So I was about 12, 13. It was about that age that uh, my sister and I started to uh, work on ourselves. So we started to, uh, we always watched uh, movies uh, with the subtitles. We didn't want the, the uh, how do you say dublaging in English? The dubbing. Dubbed. The dubbing, yeah. We didn't want anything dubbing because we enjoy the, the language, the sound of the language. So that, that's how we started and that's how we learn. Because mom, uh, my mother, I remember one day on the car, my mother was saying, you, you two should go to the English school. We want to pay you an English school. And when I just say, mom, I will not go to an English school and stay sit there by uh, all the afternoon to to learn uh, the verb to be. I already know the verb to be. I don't wanna go to school to learn that. So we, <laughs> so our mom, she wanted, but she couldn't put us on an English school. So we, all this, so that's why I apologize for my grammar. My grammar, it's, it's not that good, but it's enough, so uh, it's enough so to be understand, né? understandable. And, and I'm sure that uh, over the years we will, uh, with you, Ryan, as my, my, my dear brother-in-law, uh, with you, we will get better on that, on that matter. <laughs> well, uh, if you have the, the dedication like you did when you were young to look up, I can't even imagine this now because we're so spoiled to have Google Translate, but uh, yeah. to look up lyrics to songs one word at a time from a dictionary See. and 
and then sometimes the dictionary will tell you a word and you, oh, it's this word. But then when you finish the phrase, you realize that this word was the wrong translation. So you have to go back and retranslate yeah. the whole phrase again. That <laughs> it must have taken you like days to translate one song. And not days, let's say hours. <laughs> I, not days, hours. Since we were we were just young, we didn't have anything else to do. I guess. Right. So we just yeah. We just lay on the bed with the dictionary on the on a side and the the chart of the CD on the other side, and we started. So Ellie, Ellie, my sister used to write, and I used to look, and then we just changed it. She was to look, and I used to write. So mm -hmm. I think two or three hours we would finish. Because, uh, yeah, we would finish, and we uh, you say we we just go back to find a better word for the understanding. No, no. We just let it there, <laughs> just yeah, like it was. But sometimes you would finish a phrase and be like, mm, "That's doesn't make yes. any sense." No, it, it's, exactly. It's wrong. That's yeah, yeah. Ellie and I we used to look, but this this is so strange. Why would he write that? <laughs> so that that's the first our first translations is just like that. <laughs> uh, but at least you guys it had was, CDs, uh... right? You weren't trying to do it with tapes. Uh, no, Sometimes. not tapes. No, we, we we need the chart of the CDs. We, we couldn't under, we couldn't just listen and write. We we were not on that on that level yet. Oh. Yet, yet. Didn't you sometimes, uh, for example, some songs? I remember Alanis. I I when yeah. when, when she released her first album, mm -hmm. I learned the same way uh, you did. Not only that, but. Uh, that was my first method to just take into my, my, my dad and my mom. They had a lot of uh, long play, a lot of records, old records, and yeah. they had the lyrics. So I did the same. Uh, but sometimes, for example, in 1995, when Eleni released her first album, um, the album, I didn't have the album. So what I had to do was... Uh, I had to record from the radio. Oh yes. In a tape. And uh -huh. then I <laughs> what I tried to do, one of the exercises, I, I didn't do it as an exercise. I did it because I loved Alani so much. I I listened to the song a thousand times. A thousand times. <laughs> and I tried to write down. I didn't try. I wrote down anything I could understand. Okay. Of course. Anything I knew from other songs, from doing that, from in, with other songs, mm -hmm. and so that was that was a great exercise too. Uh, and um, until this day, uh, I don't know if that happens to you, but any word you say, I can remember a song with that word. <laughs> uh, just say a word, we remember a song because that's how uh. we learn, right? Okay, legal. So that that's interesting. <laughs> I never yeah. thought about it. <laughs> so uh, it's interesting that what you're saying, Rodrigo, because I uh, what helped what helped me a lot when I, on this process of learning was to watch movies with the English subtitles. That was interesting. In 19, uh, that movie Twister, it was from 1995, yes. yeah, 95, God, something yes. like that, right? Yes. So my my dad uh, had bought my mom a big screen TV, it was a, a 33 inches TV, and that TV had closed caption. And this movie specifically, it was the only movie that we used to rent. Remember, we used to rent, go to the rent store yes. and rent movies. So we, we rented this movie, Twister, and it was the only movie that had closed caption. The TV could could uh, could, could do it. So uh, when uh, my sister and I, we learned that the TV could do it, so we started to watch uh, movies with the English subtitles. And then our learning would just goes up like a rocket. Rocket science. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you you learn that that way, just listening, writing, and uh, the most of our learning was to watching 
movies with the English close uh, English okay. subtitles. It was really, really important because then we started to learn the expression. We, we started to understand that we couldn't just look to the dictionary and take off the word and pick up this word. Ah, oh, this word is good. Right. Yeah. So then we started to learn that the, the things, we had some expressions and it needs to make sense. And for one word in English, we had a ton of, of senses in Portuguese. So it, it was, uh, that was the time in 1995. And then our, our learning from that just, just go up another level. I, I do the same thing as you, Lucy, like, because, uh, to learn Portuguese, of course, but because mm -hmm. uh, I never speak Portuguese to anyone, you know, because yeah. like, I teach, I teach English to people. So who yeah. am I going to speak Portuguese to? Uh, the way that I learn Portuguese is by reading subtitles. Oh, and so yeah, yeah. it helps, I, right? It yeah. helps a lot, a lot. And like putting things on repeat over and over and over again. Yes. So like watching yes. reruns of Star Trek or Friends. <laughs> where, uh, yeah. Where uh, I know exactly <laughs> what the characters are going to say. Yeah. Ahead of time. Yeah. And then I can just read the subtitles. Is very helpful. Yeah. I this just. Seems, uh, is... Sorry. Go ahead. I just. Uh, I used to have the. You know the movie The Crow from 1990, 1994 with Brendan Lee? I watched the movie, uh, uh, I guess, more than 40 times, 45, 46 times that I can remember, right? So I just learned the whole script of the movie. So the movie was on and I was just repeating the whole script of the movie. It's good to learn another language when you're a teenager. Because when, when you're young, you are too, uh, everything is so intense. It's so, oh my God, that we, uh, it's the, the better time for repetition. It's the better time is the teen, the teen years. And, it, it and seems, even uh, younger. Oh, go ahead, Rodrigo. Sorry, it, it seems, well, what Ryan just said, watching reruns and everything, this seems uh, something simple or silly, but it's it really isn't. It it is a methodology of its own, right? There are yeah. there are schools or or not schools, but uh, institutions. There is there is a website, learn English through movies. I don't remember exactly the website, but uh, it is a methodology. If you I I used Friends. I I, I remember I had. Uh, um, Tapes, the VHS. Oh, oh the yes. Name? The tape that you I, I record recorded from TV. <laughs> and I recorded all all Friends episodes. So I had a bunch of tapes and I would just rewatch that on repeat every day. Yeah. Uh, yes. some movies like American Beauty, The Wonders. I watched it fifty times. Uh, so the repetition helped very 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 much yes um, yes it does yes it does i would say uh that the the brazilians that i know that have the most fluent english um and that know how to use expressions that know like the difference between words that are similar but not exactly the same that know to use the correct word in the right place that all of them learned this way they all learned through some sort of cultural means um and not by going to school yeah uh, the, uh i absolutely agree because the i remember to think when i was uh, watching friends i was watching some movie i remember thinking oh that's how they say it oh that's what they mean about that and and we used to have some we used to look some uh, of some material of the schools that we still have in brazil like uh can i say the name of the schools or is it too bad okay. no uh, i know that fisk that fisk still has the same the uh the same uh way to 
to teach that was uh, for music. But uh, I believe uh, uh, my way of learning music is much better than Fisk because I, I met a lot of people that that go through five years of schooling and didn't and didn't under, still didn't understand even understand the the, the simple yeah, the, the simple things like, like a song or uh, a, a series or a, a movie whatever and but I, I remember thinking watching and listening musics and watching movies oh that's how you say that. This expression means this. Oh, this is an expression. I didn't know that. So uh, it's. Uh, I think it's the best way. It's the better way to and, uh, to learn how to communicate with the, uh, the on a daily basis, right? It's not. I mean, it's not an English for a a, a, a meeting for a work meeting. Uh, I used to pre uh, actually. I prepare myself. Uh, uh, some days uh, before a uh, uh, work meeting, because I, I can speak like that, like I'm speaking to you right now. Now it's uh, it's uh, another vocabulary, uh, it's other expressions, uh, uh, another thing. So I prepare myself for a week to participate uh, of a work meeting. Do you have uh, to use English at work for things? Oh yes, yes I do. Uh, I was surprised to know. Uh, I was I I was I in, uh, entered on this this institute in 2004. It's like 16 years already gone, uh, and yeah, it was uh, I was shocked to know that less than five percent of the 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 researchers there uh, know English. You know, I, I could uh, I just I learned that. Uh, oh, that manager does, that manager does, and that's it. So my, the main job that I had when I got there on the institute was to translate uh, standards, space standards, uh, NASA standards, DOD standards that they are available né, for this uh, for this job. And they are available. So I started to translate it for my crew, for my team. My team didn't understand English. At so you were all. the you were the At English all. expert there when you something arrived. Something like that, yeah. Something yeah. like that. So it was it was a uh, I was I was uh, 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 I forgot the word again. <laughs> it's okay. I was surprised to know that in a research institute, people didn't know English. Is it better How? today? Not really. Wow. Not really. Not That's really. actually really surprising. Because yes, it is. now that the, the Brazilian government is trying to do all this work with the United States and you have like SpaceX showing up to try to do yes. whatever it is that they're trying to do, uh, <laughs> you would sort of expect the people uh, to be able to speak a, a reasonable level of English. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, it's really inter uh, interesting that when we, we got the, our... When you got our partnership with the the French, oh, we are ha we have a, a solid partnership with the, with Germany. They, the, they had a, a space center there called DLR, and we provide uh, rockets for them. So, and we are developing some stuff together. Now, uh, we have a, a solid uh, a solid relationship since the seventies. And every time the DLR comes to Brazil for a meeting, a technical meeting, they just say, uh, Lucy, uh, so we are having a technical meeting with DLR, so uh, you are going to present it. So, oh, okay. So then I put my finest clothes. I just pull my hair back to look like a serious person. And I went there and just, uh, and I presented what we needed to, to present. And I do this till today. And the last meeting in last year, in 2019, uh, I was, uh, they, uh, they told me that I had the better English in the whole institute. I thought, oh my God, that's not good. <laughs> that's not a good thing <laughs> to know because uh, the, uh, the foreigners can come, they can speak whatever they want, and we won't understand, you know? 
and that and that happens and that that really happens so uh, uh, i think in a research institute uh, it's not a good thing to mm, not know english if you don't know russian or don't know french or something but english uh, it's a, it's a little bit surprise it was surprising and still surprised me till this day yeah. how many yeah, how many people still don't don't know it doesn't understand the importance to know english that's that's very surprising to me actually that even I mean, you get there in 2004 and no one yeah. speaks english yes all right but you think that with 15 years and all of these new projects that something would happen but all right yes yes something would happen but it's it is happening but it's happening in uh, slow steps yeah, really slow steps uh the the brazilian culture has a way of thinking about science that it's it's really really sad for me we see science as cost not as an investment uh ryan is here uh i don't know about six seven years already Ryan. nine nine years see nine years you're you're living here like a decade so <laughs> it, you can see that the brazilian are uh a people that does not care about education it does not care about science they think science it's for scientists yeah. and it's not the government it's the people it's the yeah, people it's in the general people. right the government is the people is the reflection of the people yes, so exactly. why is the yeah. government the government took every single uh, uh, every single real, every single penny they, they used to give us it was diminishing uh, on this on this on this 15 years, years that I that, that it was decreasing in these 15 years that I worked there because they think it's cost they think ah why am I going to give money there if they're is a city on on the north side of the country that doesn't have uh, water. So I agreed with them. Yeah. I actually agree with them. But they don't use this money to give water to the northern city, right? And they don't give us to make some uh, technology to put Brazil in a market to get more money. They still man, they don't do that. So it's really uh, it's really sad to see how people in Brazil uh, feel about that. And that reflects on our morosity. I don't, I don't know if it is a word in English. Morosidade. Morosity, <laughs> I don't know if that's like a word. Slowliness. Slowliness, yeah. That oh. reflects in our slowliness. slowliness. I think that is a word in English. Um, really? Oh, we, we should yeah. look into that. Yeah, we should morose. look into that. I think morose is a word. Morose. Oh, see, uh, I'm not there. Yeah, it Rose is. Rose is for sure. There's all kinds of these words that like exist in English, but no one uses them. Your father. <laughs> yeah, my dad. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, super, super educated lawyers will use this word, yes. and everyone else will be like, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> no, lawyers they have they they have their own language. Yeah. Don't worry. Very much. Yeah. Um, well, uh, finally, um, I've noticed that that Daniel, your your little boy, my nephew, he speaks English so well. Like just recently, when I was there visiting you, he came over to me and was telling me all of the colors that he knows in English. Yes. And he was saying like blue, red, yellow. And and he was pronouncing it like a native speaker, like I would pronounce it, not like a not like a Brazilian, not like somebody that I had taught yeah. in class. He said it like he grew up in in New York, right? And he was just saying, yeah, it's a yellow thing, man. Calm down, like. Wow, that no, I'm really yellow. proud to, to hear is. that that my 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 boy has the new a New York accent. Oh my That's god! Not New York, <laughs> sorry, just some city. He just has an accent of somewhere, 
Uh, and I'm, I want to know, like, how is he learning English? How, where is he picking up these, these things? Are you teaching him or is he just learning it from somewhere? Well, we must thank for our most dear uh, teacher these days that it's YouTube. <laughs> That's where he's learning his English from. Of course, his mommy and his daddy when he's uh, uh, listen, uh, when he's watching move uh, things on YouTube in English, uh, we just we just give the little hope. Look, oh, look, Daniel, that color red, vermelho is red. So we just uh, 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 we get emphasis of what he's he's watching, uh, but he is listening to to a real uh, a real english or a, a real american speaking that's why he he got the, his pronouns i love his pronouns he comes to to me and he says i'm he says just like that i'm mega man oh yeah. my god he says mega man he doesn't say mega man he says mega man no. Uh, it's mega really mega. cute <laughs> it's really cute and he's three he's not even four yet uh. yeah. And this week, your your mom was was here on Thursday, and she said, "Ah, oh, uh, uh, Danielle came to me this week and said, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.'" <laughs> and and she said, "I couldn't understand him because she doesn't speak English. Uh, she understands like five words. She understands a few things, but she said, yeah. I couldn't yeah. understand what he was saying because he was saying it too quickly. He's saying it with no accent. He said it too perfectly." So yes. I couldn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, since we we used to grow up in a in an environment with a lot of English of, of, with songs, Daniel is it's learning by videos in YouTube. But even uh, younger, because you learned when yeah. you were like twelve. Exactly, so. exactly. We used to listen, in, but but we we never learned the English. We started to really learn English in our early teen days, but he he's learning really fast, and uh, and I uh, it's really cool to see how a, a three year old can can pronounce so perfectly uh, the uh, another language, a second language, when he, they start to listen this uh, at this early age. Yeah, um, and um, Rodrigo, you have a you have a boy about the same age. I think Vittorio is a little bit older than, than Danielle. Yeah. Is he speaking yeah, any, enough. is he speaking any English at all? Or? You know, he knows, he knows words uh, and he knows simple sentences. Uh, and probably he can explain the verb to be and the present simple very well, especially after the quarantine, because he's been listening, uh, listening to me teaching all day long explaining adverbs and that so probably he can explain about English by now um, and he knows but he knows mostly uh, basic sentences like what's your name my name is v my name is Vito or Vittorio uh, and uh, colors numbers stuff like that but I, I haven't um, I've never tried to teach him English I do exactly what Lucy does He's, he's watched uh, anything, everything in English since, since he was born. And he's, um, he's been listening to me speaking English all day long. And we watch, I watch everything in English and Mari watches everything in English. Uh, so he's been picking up. But I, because I don't have specific education on how to teach children, I decided not to, not to try and force, force, you know, try, try to do it and not know, not knowing exactly how. Um, some of my friends, they, they, they have an agreement. Uh, the, they are both Brazilian and the father is a, uh, an English teacher, but a kid, he, he, he's educated on teaching kids. So he only speaks English. To his son, sons. He only spoke English to his son since they were born. 
I tried to do that with Vito, but the first time I got angry, I like Portuguese came out and I so I <laughs> yeah, I gave up and I said I can't. Uh, I I'm not that disciplined or educated. So I decided not to. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but but it's okay, Rodrigo. I I, I had a, a parents meeting in Daniel's school, and they were saying that this year, uh, the his school would be, uh, uh, how do you say, bilingual? The two two language they they bilingual were, bilingual yeah, bilingual. So the, his school would be bilingual by this year, and then the uh, the the professional that they would would come to uh, he came to us and explained how uh how you you make young kids like like his age to learn english and they said that uh the the good thing that you put english in a children's life like this this early is because they will learn the uh to vocalize the 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 language so it's what happened to daniel the the speech that he does it's it's really close to an Amer uh, native american right so uh, until uh for uh, three four five six years old uh, it's good to to show so just the the words so they learn to to say the numbers they learn to say the colors but they get used to the the sound to the phone, uh, phonemes is that, is that yeah. or what is it? Uh -huh. yeah to the yeah to the phonemes of the language and when they grow older since like seven eight years old they are already able to make to build a small sentences just like that what's your name i am vittorio so uh it's it's uh, when they they explain this to us i was i was a uh, how can you say? I was actually worried that one why they are going to to teach English to a three year old kid, but they are not teaching. They are just putting the the kids on the environment with another language so they can get used to the to the other language. And it's uh, I, I thought it was really interesting, and I can see this coming to life. Uh, watching Daniel just uh, saying, "I am Mega Man." Nah. Something very interesting that happened to me, uh, I don't know if I told Ryan about it, but uh, Vito studied when he was about one and two years old, he studied in a bilingual school that was not really bilingual, you know, there are tons of bilingual schools in, in Sao Paulo and they're not really bilingual. Yeah. And what happened was that parents got together and they said they wanted the school to be 100% in English and they said, no, that's not what bilingual means. And they said, no, but we, it, it was at a rich place. And no, but we're paying, so we want it. And so the owner of the school talked to me and he said, Rodrigo, can you explain to them uh, a little about English and bilingual methodology? I said, okay, I have to study about it. Yeah, I can talk to the parents. And so I said, but before, call the parents or send an email and make a survey to check how many parents speak English. So he did it. And 20% at a rich place, 20% had intermediate level, like 5% had advanced level. And I said, and, and so after that survey, the parents gave up on the meeting mm -hmm. because the owner explained, look, if we have 100% English here, they have to go home and they have to you have to be able to support them in English. You have to be able to talk to them. And the parents said, oh, no, so it's fine. It's okay. We're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, something, something that I read a while ago um, is that when, when like children are, are born, when they're very young, um, and Lucy, you were saying about the pronunciation, Yes. But the, the hearing is also a part of it. So when, when you have a very young child, their ears and their brain are capable of hearing all of the, the sounds, the phonies, yes. I think. 
But if you don't expose children to to phonemes, their brain shuts off the sounds that they don't hear. Exactly. Yeah. And and then when they become adults or not even adults, I guess, even adolescents, it's really hard or impossible to reactivate those deactivated parts of your ears and your brain. So like for me trying to understand Portuguese, there are sounds in Portuguese that I do not hear. And people say words and I'm like, wait, but you said this and I say it and they say, no, no, I said this. And I say, shut up. Those are the same words. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> because to my, to my ear, it's the same word. But to your oh. ear, it's not. And the same thing happens to people in English, that there are words that you, because you're not native speakers, you cannot hear the subtle difference in what yes. I'm saying and what you are trying to say. Yeah, but if you expose a, a child to the sounds at a very early age, then their brain activates that part of it and they keep the ability to hear it for the rest of their life. So something interesting is uh, that even even for someone that speaks good English, uh, a, a Brazilian, for example, that uh, that knows and that speaks very well the the L sound, for example, when you say milk, okay. it's almost impossible to pick up the N sound when you say man or the A, the difference between the A and the E. Yeah. So some subtleties are you have to pick up. You know, it, it takes forever to, takes to pick forever. up. Yeah. Like you, the, ha you have like to practice. World. You have to practice. World is like the hardest word to try to teach world. someone to say. I, I, I just, I just want to, I just want to kill myself when I was, when I'm listening to the radio and they say per, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Yeah. yeah. Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Oh, oh man, I just want to kill myself when and, I hear that. And the most frustrating part of trying to teach this is that the student doesn't hear the difference. You're like, yes. world, uh, word, world, word, teacher, yeah, it's the word, same thing. Yeah. No, Girl. they're not. They're different. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's funny. So uh, I guess uh, Daniel will be a poly, uh, polyglot. Polyglot, is that right? Is that, yeah. is that a, a polyglot? Because all he watches here is uh, English, Korean, Japanese, and some Chinese, some Mandar Mandarin. Yeah, that, that's what the, that, that's what he's watching. Actually, Find I watch and he he's hearing. Find I am watching Arabic his hearing. Or, or something, some Arabic show to watch, and then you'd be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Japanese and Korea, a Korean are my next goal. Well, so but but that explains Ryan what you you said that that explains why my cousin I have a cousin uh, the same age that he he just can't learn English he tried to learn English for since he was a, a young man and he and his job he's a TI manager you say he ha, he has a, a a manager job in the in technology of information. And he can't learn English. He tried a lot of schools, a lot of teachers, and just he can understand it. Yeah. And what you said, just like, is explain it to me why he can't learn. Yeah. And and from what I was reading, like the the last possible opportunity to get your brain to learn these things is during adolescence. Really? Um, and then it's sometimes too late. Yeah. At, at that point, it's sometimes too late. But if by, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but after adolescence, if you try to learn a language, it's it's too late. And you will never really be able to activate those those sounds for your brain. You can learn, but learn, just learn. Right? Yeah, just uh, the difference between learn. like understanding and really knowing, you know, mm. like. The difference between how Daniel is going to speak English and how Rodrigo speaks English, because yeah. Rodrigo is the <laughs> most amazing non-native English speaker I have, I know. But it's like, 
he's not native. Yeah. But you cannot, you can't tell. I'm bad because it's even better, you know. <laughs> yeah. he's, the 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 mistake is that he's too perfect. Oh. Exactly. I fake I fake it a little, you know. <laughs> Whereas well. when I make mistakes, they're good because they're native mistakes. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I was telling my uh, my husband today. My God, Ryan is a North American in Brazil. You know what that means? That means he can do anything because he's a North American, a legitimate North American in Brazil. That's why he put up that that diploma thing so he can prove he's American because he needs to prove because by by looking at Ryan, you can never tell. Yeah, it's not yeah. obvious at all. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's not. And he is a Brazilian soul. Mm -hmm. I told him that already. You was born in the wrong country. You are Brazilian. You got dengue, man. I lived here since I was born. I never got dengue. <laughs> yes. So you're, you're like now it's in your blood. Okay. So. <laughs> Literally speaking. <laughs> yeah, you don't go back. Uh, cool, cool. Well, um, do you have anything else? Do you want to ask her, Rodrigo? No, not not really. Yeah. Cool. That's so then, then thanks a lot, Lucy. That was fun. Uh, that was fun. I was I was so so pleased and so happy to see Rodrigo again because I only hear about you, Rodrigo. So Rafa okay. says that ah, I saw Rodrigo, I saw Manteiga, and Ryan says I always yeah. ask uh, 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 Ryan about you, and I was really happy to see to see you how well you're doing, and thank you very mm -hmm. much to for this opportunity. For me, it was it was priceless. Thank oh, you very thank much. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, all of our fan will really appreciate. <laughs> Brenda, right? Yeah. Brenda. This is exactly. Kaufman. <laughs> Remember, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. So we will yes. be there on that uh, on the early beginning of your of your podcast. That's right. I'll remember you when I'm rich and famous. Thank you. I won't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. I know you yeah. won't. I, I don't expect you to. <laughs> cool. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thanks everybody for watching. And we will see you all next week on Ryan and Rodrigo. And until then, have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>